For all the collective dumping that popular culture has done on George Lucas in the wake of the Star Wars prequels, even as it continues to reflexively celebrate everything else he created, so long apparently as someone else is writing and directing it, it's easy to forget that once upon a time those self-same fickle fanboys were so furiously demanding that he give them more Star Wars that they were unwilling to give new projects he did launch much of a chance. Case in point, Willow, a dark and decidedly offbeat 1988 fantasy that was inexplicably dismissed on release as a self-ripoff of Star Wars despite feeling very much like a wholly different creature in the details. Lucas produced with Ron Howard directing from a Bob Dolman screenplay based on an idea Lucas was said to have first formulated as an unrealized project called Munchkins in 1972, and revived upon meeting actor Warwick Davis during the production of Return of the Jedi. And while the influences are fairly obvious, particularly Tolkien, the Brothers Grimm, Dungeons and Dragons, and other high fantasy mainstays that were resurgent in the 70s, the sum of it all adds up to something particularly unique and charming. Maybe not an all-time classic, but a novel and entertaining fantasy feature all the same. Go in the direction the bird is flying! <laughs> it's going back to the village! Ignore the bird! Follow the river. Set in a fairly straightforward fairy tale kingdom, the plot involves a wicked queen named Bavmorda who's attempting to thwart the prophesied birth of a female messiah figure who will defeat her by keeping all pregnant women captive and looking for a telltale birthmark. When the chosen child is discovered, it is rescued and sent down the river Moses style, where it unwittingly comes under the protection of a village of little people called the Nelwyn, and in particular a wizard in training named Willow Ufgood who finds himself drafted to lead a party that will return the baby to its own people. instead discovering that the kingdom is being ravaged by Bavmorda's army, led by the evil General Kale and the Queen's own daughter Sorsha, and that Willow himself is now bound up in the broader prophecy. Charged by a forest spirit to protect the child, Willow must now team with Val Kilmer's mercenary Mad Mardigan and a pair of even smaller beings called Brownies to sneak out Bavmorda's exiled good witch rival, restore her to human form, and refine his own magic abilities in order to save the baby, the kingdom, and ultimately the whole world. Along the way, there are chases, escapes, a castle siege, a war, some trolls, a dragon, and a wizard's duel for the ages at Bavmorda's fortress. Clearly, it's not the most original entry in the genre in terms of style and narrative. Instead, Willow keeps its originality to the details, which is part of the overall charm. Most obviously, very few films of the time, or even today, are headlined by a little person main character, and Davis, as ever, is a unique screen presence and works as an unassuming lead hero. Plus, it's a stroke of visual genius to hand Willow a pair of sidekicks who are even smaller than him to contend with for much of the film. Likewise, yeah, we've seen the scoundrel who redeems himself arc for Mad Mardigan before, but Kilmer puts his own spin on the material and makes the character feel less like a Han Solo, jaded pirate clone, and more like a burned-out former rock you are great. And while we've seen a plurality of evil queens in the same genre, our Merlin figure also turning out to be an old woman is actually pretty new. And there's a giant dick monster named after Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> Really, look it up, General Kale 2. As a key example of the playful originality that makes Willow so amusing, the moment the plot introduces a love potion among the magic gear being carried around by the brownies, and you immediately remember it seems extraneous for Bavmorda to have two evil hench generals, and that one of them is a woman, you feel like you now know the entire reason for Sorsha to be in the movie and the rest of her arc. But instead, it's Mad Modigan who gets dosed and falls for her, adding some clever awkwardness to her still inevitable turn to the good side, and some winning comedy beats for Kilmer. You, my sun, my moon, my starlit sky. Simple change, but it works. Unfortunately, Willow didn't connect with audiences quite enough to justify a sequel, even though Lucas had planned a whole broader mythology, because of course he did. Instead, those stories did eventually get told as a trilogy of novels by comic book writer Chris Claremont from 1995 to 2000. Here's the thing, fantasy fans have had a lot of movies to watch in the 80s, but very few of them were actually any good, and even some of the supposed classics are mainly prized for featuring beautiful women, and also plenty of men, in various stages of undress, or maybe a cool sword or one memorable monster sequence. Willow, while imperfect, is an actual good movie that deserves to stand out among the broader sword and sorcery pantheon, and younger audiences especially deserve to encounter it on their own merits. It's original, it's interesting, it's got a great score, and it's almost certainly Warwick Davis' most iconic performance outside the Leprechaun movie. And while we're on the subject, yeah, it's pretty damn inspiring to see him as the featured lead of a major Hollywood action-adventure movie. Patience, Willow. Courage, Willow. 
If you think you've seen every fantasy or fairy tale movie, but somehow you missed out on Willow, you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. It's a real gem. Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B. Chapman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest Movie Bob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, Movie Bob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future Movie Bob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another Movie Bob production.